So I'm not loving the, what she's singing about because um, it seems distressing and she's going through something. But I am loving this song. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Into the Music. My name is Greg, and I'm going to react to a song requested by Bike Guy. Bike Guy has made a few requests already on my Kopi site. Kopi, what is that? Go check below. There's a link. will take you to a place that has information on how to make a request, which I will guarantee that I'll react to. So uh, Bike Guy wants me to listen to a song by Courtney Bonnet. That is the artist, and the song is Avent Gardner. I believe that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Avent Gardner. I don't know Courtney. I don't know the song. And Bike Guy has made a few requests already. They've been pretty good. Um, so let's see if this one is better than any of the ones he's made yet. Um, let's see. I hope so. I like that. So I'm not loving the, what she's singing about because um, it seems distressing and she's going through something. But I am loving this song. I am loving this song. I want to pull this thing back <laughs> so badly and start over. I, we're just two minutes in, you know, too far in. Uh, I'm going to just pull back a little bit when she started singing that. I'm having trouble breathing in. This is so good. The movement, the flow of this song, her cadence.
I mean, 519 is a pretty long song. And I just did not want that to end at all. I could have went another two, three minutes. I could have went another go around with that not breathing in line. I love that. I loved everything about this song. I truly love this. <laughs> I really did. Wow. Wow. Bike guy, this has to be your best request. Uh, let me gather my thoughts together. I'll get some information about Courtney uh, and the lyrics. The lyrics. I mean, I wrote a few things down. The lyrics. I got to pull them up. That's going to be a treat. All right. See everyone on the other side. Bike guy. Your best one. Best one by far. Not to say that the other ones are bad. No. No, no, no. But this one. This one is the right at the top. You just cranked the bar completely high now for all future requests by you. <laughs> so uh, I love this song that much. I really did. Uh, I can't wait to get back to it. It just had such a free, easy flow to it. It really did. And yet, you know, there were these things that were being dropped throughout the song that made it, um, that made it rich and um, I, I guess complex. Oh, no, not really. Again, I mean, I think what was happening with all those little sound effects that were going on, she's kind of describing a world. Um, she's kind of doing like this sort of free flow sort of speak, you know, what's ever in her mind is just coming out. Right. It seems like there's no filter. Uh, she's talking about, I think, something like an incident or something um, where uh, she's around the house or something and she's unable to breathe in. She keeps repeating that. Right. Um, and you would think that maybe metaphorically. Right. She's just kind of having because I think there's something going on really big picture with her life. You know, she's trying to find some some traction in her life you know she's kind of going through things and she's trying to figure things out and so metaphorically you would think she's just having trouble breathing in but i think there's a particular incident because then she's talking about the hospital you know she doesn't want to really owe the hospital any sort of bills or money it seems to be like a balance of the two that's my interpretation um so you know that is that's that's deep if I'm right on that, and I got the lyrics pulled up, and I can't wait to get into it, but if I'm right on that, then there's like real complexity and deep, you know, um, deepness with the song. But it had such an easy flow to it, you know. I mean, you know, there weren't really major change ups. It was just the sounds that were kind of coming in. The guitar was doing some crazy stuff, especially in the beginning. It was like a wailing sound that was coming in. Like the person who was, that guitarist was just making that, that thing cry, you know? It was kind of eerie. It was like really almost like a wailing, you know? I mean, there's weeping and, and crying, you know? And it was like, you know, wailing, you know? Where it takes everyone's attention. What the hell's going on? And that's what that guitar was doing, right? There's something going on. There's something not right. And then, uh, and then she kind of like gets into it. Uh, and then later on, there were like these little sort of um, kind of almost like that guitar sound, but then more like in pieces, more like abstract here, there, you know, in the background. You know, it's just it was an, an uneasy easiness. You know, you never felt, even though the flow of the song was easy, okay, felt easy. There was nothing easy about that song about there was just it just kept on just in case, you know, you started feeling good, you know, it's a feel good song, you know, I'm really getting into this rhythm and the groove and all, you know, now there was something with the little sounds all over the place that was kind of like, you know, reminding you no there's there's something, you know, there's something wrong here, um, or wrong or something or just, you know, take notice, you know, take attention. Um, I want to really get into the lyrics, but I do want to get into this artist to find out about her. First time reacting to a song from her. So Courtney Melber Barnett, and she was born in 1987. So she is relatively young. 
uh, Australian. Yeah, okay. I detected some sort of accent. It sound, she sounded Australian. Okay, cool. Singer, songwriter, musician. That's what Wiki is telling me. Uh, known for her deadpan singing style and witty rambling lyrics. Yeah, rambling. <laughs> One word uh, to describe what I was trying to say like in five minutes. <laughs> Good old Wiki. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, let's see. I actually skipped too far ahead. So Wiki is also telling me that she attracted attention with the release of her debut EP. I've got a friend called Emily Ferris in 2012. And then international interest came with the release of her EP, the double EP, colon, uh, a, that's the punctuation mark, not the actual word, a sea of split peas in 2013. Then she put out a debut album called Sometimes I Sit and Think and Sometimes I Just Sit. <laughs> I love that. And this album actually was released in 2015 to widespread acclaim. She was nominated for Best New Artist at the 58th Annual Grammy Awards and International Female Solo Artist at the 2016 Brit Awards. She then released Lot of Sea Lice, a collaborative album with Kurt Vile. I've heard his name. I've seen his name. She released her second album, Tell Me How You Really Feel, to further acclaim in 2018. And then she put out a third album, Things Take Time, Take Time, and that was released in November 2021. And this song seems to come from one of those albums. No. Oh, it's coming from that EP, the double EP, A Sea of Split Peas, that released in 2013. And there's several songs on that, including this one. Okay. So that's cool. So this is actually from a while ago. Um, and there's a nice picture of her. She's playing guitar, and there's some information. Someone, a contributor, wrote this about the song in Genius.com, the lyric website that I use a lot. Uh, in the song, Barnett explores malaise, routine, and her difficulty escaping her own discomfort. Okay, yeah, there's that sort of big picture kind of thing. And this says here, the song's central symbol, breath and its deprivation, precipitates in a literal event an acute asthma attack which artfully doubles as a metaphor for panic or anxiety that comes along with life's routines and cycles. Okay, so she's actually having an asthma attack. That makes sense, right? I can't breathe in. I'm having trouble breathing in. In the song, Barnett's inability to breathe takes hold just as inspiration has struck. Narratively, Barnett's persona struggles initially with feelings of helplessness and perhaps depression, only to feel inspired by her neighbor's honest enjoyment of her garden. When, however, when Barnett attempts to share in that inspiration and enjoyment, the sudden onset of an asthma attack sends her back to stating that she, quote, she should, she should have stayed in bed today, uh, end quote, and, quote, prefers the mundane, end quote. Her failure to capitalize on this inspiration leads her to internalize her problem. No longer is she facing a momentary attack, uh, but by the end of the song, she herself is floored at a deeper level. I'm not that good at breathing in. The title Avant Gardener is a play on the phrase Avant Garde. Okay, meaning out of the ordinary, unique, uh, strange. And Gardener, as the song discusses using gardening as a way to escape from your own thoughts. How, thought, how clever is that? <laughs> Put together, Avant Gardener represents how a normal or even bland day of gardening drastically changed. Right, a routine thing, and it actually really becomes sort of a signature moment for her, right, in her life. The term avant garde comes with certain connotations of underground music and the 80s, 90s grunge scenes, which the alternative vocals and themes of the song complement. I wish every lyric in genius.com came with this kind of information uh, describing the song and the history uh, behind it. Um, so bravo, <laughs> as other contributors actually going to be watching this. Well, in case you have it too, good job. Uh, so I sleep in late. This is verse one. I sleep in late. Another day. Oh, what a wonder. Oh, what a waste. It's a Monday. It's so mundane. What exciting things will happen today? The yard is full of hard rubbish. 
It's a mess. And I guess the neighbors must think we run a meth lab. I thought I heard about a meth because <laughs> then I'm thinking, oh, there's drugs involved here. But then that was it. There was nothing else um, about that. We should amend that. I pulled the sheets back. It's 40 degrees and I feel like I'm dying. Life's getting hard in here. So I do some gardening, anything to take my mind away from where it's supposed to be. The nice lady next door talks of green beds and all the nice things that she wants to plant in them. I want to grow tomatoes on the front steps, sunflowers, bean sprouts, sweet corn and radishes. I feel proactive. I pull out weeds. All of a sudden, I'm having trouble breathing in. And then the chorus, I'm having trouble breathing in. I'm having trouble breathing in. I mean, just that reminds me, just brings me back to the rhythm of the song. It's just, it's just flowing. It really is. Uh, verse two, my hands are shaky. My knees are weak. I can't seem to stand on my own two feet. I'm breathing, but I'm wheezing. Feel like I'm emphysema. <laughs> is that a real word in verb, in verb speak? Uh, my throat feels like a funnel filled with wheat bix and kerosene. And oh no, next thing I know, they call up triple O. I'd rather die than owe the hospital till I get old. So she's actually having a real uh, moment, a, a real event, right? Uh, it's probably scaring the neighbor and the neighbor's on the phone calling the hospital, right? The ambulance come and get her. And she's like, no, 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 no. Um, I get adrenaline straight to the heart. I feel like Uma Thurman post overdose in Pulp Fiction, right? Uh, when she overdoses and John Travolta is coming to the rescue, he's got a lot riding on this, right? His boss and all, if he screws this up, he is so dead. And he actually sticks that one in the middle of a chest. And she's like, oh, that was crazy. Uh, reminds me of the time when I was really sick and I had too much pseudo fed and I couldn't sleep at night. Half, that's the thing. She's just, she goes from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Like you can't keep up. Like you're out of breath. You really are. You know, talk about how she can't breathe in in a way we can't breathe in too. Cause we're just constantly like almost with her, you know, as she's almost like she's out of breath and she's trying to catch her breath. But in the meantime, think about it too. You know, she can't breathe in, but there's so much that's coming out of her, right? This free flow thought and just everything is coming out. Um, and almost like nothing coming in and we're right with her as everything is just, you know, formulating in ahead and just being said, um, I couldn't sleep at night, halfway down high street, Andy looks ambivalent. Who's Andy. He's probably wondering what I'm doing, getting in an ambulance. So it's a friend, it's a boyfriend, husband, the paramedic thinks I'm clever. Cause I play guitar. I think she's, so this, was this a real live event? Uh, I think she's clever because she stops people dying. Anaphylactic and super hypochondriatic should have stayed in bed today. I much prefer the mundane. <laughs> I take a hit from an asthma puffer. I do it wrong. I was never good at smoking bongs. And in the chorus, I'm not that good at breathing in. And it just repeats that line. Yeah, this is such an interesting song. I can't wait to go back. Now I kind of have all these words. I want to have that conversation with her. Actually, really, she's having the conversation. We're just listening, uh, of course. Uh, but I want to be on that receiving end to hear these words again to that music. It was so good. Uh, Bike Guy, again, this was great. Again, uh, you did yourself in because now the bars raised really high. <laughs> so you got you to gotta bring it again big time. Good job, though. Thank you. And to everyone who watched this, thank you too. I appreciate it. Uh, if you're watching this because you love this artist, let me know what that next song should be. What do you think about this song and the reaction? Let me know. I can take it. And in the meantime, I'll see every one of you on the next episode of Into the Music. Yeah.